Wake your ass up. The Breakfast Club is on. Wake up. The Breakfast Club, Envy, and Charlemagne, the voice of the culture. You think I'm going to come here when this shit ain't hot? See, y'all different. Y'all the culture. It's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all know what y'all talking about. This is probably becoming the most prominent form for hip hop. Being here next to all of you guys, it's really big. Put it in, put it in perspective. The, the Breakfast Club, bitches. Wake up. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 y
Wow. That is terrifying. Wow. And mm-hmm. I don't see how you combat that. You can't. I don't see how you combat that. I don't I don't know how you not. fight I don't know how you fight that because it just sounds like a recording of the president's voice. It's leaving your message, like, yeah, I, I, telling I, you what to do. Absolutely. You, you listen to that. You're not thinking that's AI. You're just thinking it's a robocall, which that's is a recorded message from from the president. The president. Yeah. How do you combat that? Yeah, I, I mean, you really can't. You can only go behind it and try to clean it up. But once the, the what they call the the two paces out of the tube, it's really hard to backtrack. So they are um, putting in the media that just in case anybody is confused, that the audio is not accurate and you can vote in today's primary. It does not stop you from voting in November. And this is just really dangerous because there's so much confusion around the election uh, as well today, even on the Democrat side, which I'll explain here in a second. But I did want to say that Hannah Fareed, an expert at the digital uh, forensics at the University of Carolina, Berkeley, reviewed the call and confirmed it was definitely low quality AI fake. He said that uh, we have been concerned that uh, this AI will be weaponized in the upcoming election. And we are seeing this surely as a, a sign of things to come. But he calls this uh, low quality. But imagine somebody listening to this. It sounds pretty accurate. That that's, sound no low quality. that's low yeah. quality. What's high quality? Lord have mercy. Right. That's not low quality. And you can't tell the difference. The sad thing about it, like you said, even if they put out all these things on the news that that was fake. A lot of people don't watch the news. A lot of people, right. they get them phone calls. They're working. When they come home, they, they're putting their kids to sleep. They're cooking and and knocking out. They're not listening. They're not watching to see if it's real or not. So they're going to think those calls are absolutely a thousand percent real. And, and it, it and, sounds like the president. And, you know, uh, you know, you said something, Taz, and I, I like to uh, update that that saying for 2024. You can't put the toothpaste back in the YouTube. Once it's out there on the Internet, it's out there. And then we spend so much time debating whether it's fake or not. And even if it is fake, it's always that shadow of a doubt inside of you that I don't know. I think you might just be telling me it's fake because you don't want me to believe the truth. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Even even when I was trying to pull the clip, I didn't know what well, who can I get the clip from? Is that fake too? Is that another fake? You know, it, it's just even for media, um, it, it's going to be a hard time because we don't want to continue to put out fake information Jesus, as well. That's scary. Um, but, but I did want to give you an update quickly on the Republican side. Trump versus Haley will be tonight uh, in the primary. The DNC decided not to have a Democrat primary. This is also what's confusing. So when you had these type of robocalls out with President Biden. You don't know if he's on the ballot, not on the ballot, but just want to let folks know that the DNC decided to go with South Carolina first for their primary February 3rd, uh, but New Hampshire said they don't care about that. They are holding an election anyway tonight for Democrats. President Biden will not be on the ballot, but his supporters are writing him in, uh, but uh, Democrat Representative Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson will be on the ballot tonight, uh, and this is what they had to say in their final pitch. Phillips telling a Nashua audience today he's, quote, appalled Mr. Biden chose not to be on the ballot in New Hampshire. Phillips saying he knows the odds, but argues he had to get in this race because of the possibility of a Trump-Biden rematch. And yes, we're a long shot. Darn right I am. Thank goodness we live in a country in which the long shot can have platform. And but for all of you and this great state, I never could have even tried. Marianne Williamson running for president for the second time. She says her economic agenda would allow her to beat Trump. And she says Granite Staters are paying attention and making up their minds now. Well, it's very obvious that a lot of Granite Staters wait until the last minute to make their decision. Maybe that's unique to this particular year because there's so much turmoil and people are trying to sort of figure out the landscape. I feel uh, I feel based on the way Biden is polling, he needs to be on all these ballots. I'm not sure he has the luxury uh, of, of not being on on these ballots. Not at all. Mm-hmm. But we'll see the results tomorrow. But that just gives you just how confusing this confusing this is. You got AI calls out there making fake calls. You got a Democrat primary. Um, Democrat side is not really a primary that they're going to acknowledge. You got people telling people to write people in, don't write people in. It's it's just a mess. So uh, folks need to definitely stay tapped into. Uh, you know, figure out what's going on, and we'll have the results uh, results tomorrow to break you, break it all down. For we you. told y'all this was gonna be a cluster F. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we told yeah, y'all this indeed. last year. Last year, if you didn't see what was going, what was coming in 2024, you are insane. The misinformation is ridiculous. The the the, the journalism is lazy. Everybody's being irresponsible. It's it, it's gonna be something to behold in 2024. All right. I hope we make it. Well, that is front page news. Now, what are we talking next hour?
Yeah, m more mess. The Supreme Court uh, went against Texas and said you need to cut down uh, the razor, uh, the razor barbed wire that's uh, keeping uh, illegal immigrants from crossing over. Texas said this is not over. So big fight at the border. We'll talk about it at seven o'clock. All right. We'll see you in an hour. Everybody mm -hmm. else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051. Call us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne, Envy, what up? Are we live? This is your time to get it off your chest. I got an indoor pool, an outdoor pool. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. We can get on the phone right now here and tell you what it is. We live? Hello, who's this? How you doing, man? It's Lamar. Lamar, what up? Get it off your chest. Yo, I'm a boiler mechanic for 20 years. I just started my new YouTube channel. It's going good. I'm teaching people how to fix their unit. It's cold out here. People need some love from the boiler man. That's you know what I mean? You know, it's it's funny, to... it's funny you said that. My parents' boiler went out yesterday, and and the ultimate. Oh <laughs> uh, no, nah, they got we got to fix it quickly. But it was the uh, <laughs> he was ready for that. He was ready to go, but not. Nah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's one of those jobs that people always need, regardless. Like is is that's why we always talk about trade schools. One of those trades that exactly. people will always need. But the thing is. You don't really find too many schools for boilers. That's why I started this channel, and that's why it looks like this channel is look, looking pretty good. It's Boiler Heroes on YouTube. Boiler Heroes. It, it's, it's really it's really interesting. It's showing me a lot of love, so I'm figuring, you know, just put it out there and, and show, show people how to heat their homes, you know? That's dope. And the device that, that went out, I guess, you know, it's a device to tell you that when the water is too low and it re the water. That's the low, that's the low water cutoff. Yeah, how, how much is that? Well, it depends on which one you got because there's different models. But if it's a home boiler, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie. I'm thinking you good with your moms, and so you got them a big crib, so it's probably a big boiler. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was eleven hundred. I thought that was a lot. I ain't gonna front. It, 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 that's a right about, a right about right. Yeah, that's about right. right. I ain't gonna right, lie. Cool. All right, cool, cool. Just making sure. Thank you, Bo Bo Boiler Heroes on YouTube. Check me out. I'm definitely gonna follow you. The moral of the story you, is I the moral of the story is learn a trade. Absolutely. Learn a trade, man. But what's the welding woman's name that, that calls all the time? That, Jordan. That, Jordan the welder. Jordan the welder. Follow her too. She's a, a woman welder that gets busy and talks about her experiences as well. Really, 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 really dope. Hello, who's this? Hello, this is James calling from North Carolina. James from North Carolina. Get it off your, your chest, brother. Yeah, I had a question for you and Charlotte, man. man. Have y'all checked out that that uh, documentary on the 40-year anniversary of the Thriller album? I no, not. I keep hearing about it, man. I want to watch it. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. It brought back a lot of memories, man. Man, Mike was a pure genius, man. A straight-up genius. He was far ahead of his time. And I'm going to tell y'all yeah, something else that people don't talk about. You know how mm -hmm. everybody likes to say, oh, Bill Cosby was trying to buy NBC. That's why they bought him down. Mm-hmm. Michael Jackson really, really did own half of the music industry's publishing. Absolutely. People don't talk about that oh. enough. I feel like that was a, a thing. Like they really they they really put a lot of controversy and stuff on Michael because of the things that uh he was he owned and the things he was speaking out against as far as in the music industry. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother. That man was that man was Yeah, okay. Have a good morning. You too, bro. Hello, who's this? Good morning. It's DJ Lord Geo from Newburgh, New York. What's up, brother? Get it off your chest. What's going on. I just wanted to talk to the brother Charlemagne, give him his flowers. He's um, I went, I went, I went to his uh, website, signed up for the mental health. They gave me eight free sessions, and after that, I kept it going. After that, so I just wanted to give you your flowers, my brother, and keep pushing uh, the mental health for the black man like myself. I appreciate you, King. Don't 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 tell don't don't tell too many people though. I want them to uh I want them to continue to say I'm the bad guy. Oh no, nah, not at all, not at all, man. Not at all. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate I, you, King. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, enjoy your day. You too now. Get it off your chest. 800 585 1051 If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Break it, it up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? This is Jamel Scott from Yonkers, New York. Jamel Scott, what up? Get it off your chest. What's up? What's up, DJ Envy and Charlemagne? Peace, My name man. is Jamel Scott. I'm an assistant principal down in Yonkers, New York. Just want to give love and peace to all the administrators and educators out there. I'm also a father of four amazing young kids active in their lives. I want to give peace and love to all the fathers that's active in all their kids' lives. Absolutely. 
Um, it's just not shouted out how it should be. And then finally, my wife, we've been together 17 years. Woo. Terry Scott, love you. And uh, check out her customization business on Instagram, SP6 Custom. All right, brother. I appreciate that. All right. How old are your kids? My kids are 14, 10, 7, and 3. Wow. Oh, you got a three-year-old. I know that three-year-old running the house right now. Oh, my God. His name is Seven. He's the boss. He's Any the boss. kid that was born in the, during the pandemic, they boss. different. They've been here before. What? I feel the same way about my, my <laughs> two-year-old Pepe. She's the boss. She's been here before. She know too much. They've been here. And his, and his best friend, his godbrother, Donnie, shout out to Gina Lauren, his best friend, they run it. He's four years old. They run the whole household. All right, brother. The whole household. You have a good one, man. You too. All right, Thank brother. Thank you. Peace and blessings. Same to you. Hello, who's this? Good morning to you, DJ Envy and Charlemagne guys. Peace, King. Good morning. Peace, peace. I just want to vent to the Lord for blessing me with another day and um, allowing me to go forward and start my business, the greatest. DigloFashion.store. God did it. God did it. Absolutely. I appreciate it, you guys and Charlemagne God. I appreciate your um, growth. You know, I, I, I watched your growth over years. You're, you're good. You're great. And have a blessed day, guys. Tell them how to get your yeah. um stuff. You, you talked about your clothing line. Tell them oh, how to check it out. Diglu, that is that is Diglu Fashion. That store D I G L O O dot fashion. I mean Diglu Fashion. That store I have some great things up there. I've created myself and other things for people, women, and children. So um, it's a blessing. God, thank you. God, thank you. Thank we you, thank Lord. God for it all. That's yes, right. all praises thank due you, to bro. God always. All righty now. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can hit us up. When we come back, we got your rumor report. Africans are mad at Meek Mill. And we'll why tell Africans you why. mad at Meek Mill? We'll tell you why. When I, saw, when I saw Meek Mill in Ghana, they was loving all over me. They were going crazy for me. That was about a year ago. But we'll tell you why. What happened? We'll, we'll discuss when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. We gotta send a rest in peace. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name, or you gossiping, or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on the Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. Who died? Dexter Scott King uh, passed away at his home in Malibu. He was 62 mm. years old. He was the youngest son of Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King. Uh, he was seven when Martin Luther King Jr. passed away. He was a Morehouse graduate. He passed away from a battle with prostate cancer. That's why you have to go get your prostate checked. First of all, send the healing energy to the King family always. Uh, you know, always sending them healing energy. But you got to get your prostate checked. I got my prostate checked like two, three weeks ago. I forgot how long ago it was. Mm -hmm. But it's uncomfortable. Yeah. But clearly it's uh, worth it in the long run. No, absolutely. Uh, and that's why they tell you it's if it's caught early, it's treatable. If it's not caught as early, it's very difficult to battle. Uh, that's why Charlemagne and I always come up here and tell you, you have to get your, your, your prostate checked. You have to get a colonoscopy. You got to do all these things to make sure that you can live for uh, the future. Well, that was the first time I ever had my prostate exam check. I actually went because uh, it was for my vasectomy consultation. And when I was there for my vasectomy consultation, the urologist was like, you need to get your prostate checked. Now, being that I'm stupid, I didn't know that, you know, one go with the other. Mm -hmm. So I just, I didn't know why all of a sudden he wanted to, you know, check my prostate. Right. Okay. You know, because first he told me to drop my pants, then he checked my legs and stuff for the vasectomy. That was the first time you ever did it? What you mean? Got prostate prostate exam? Exam? Yeah. Yes. Now, you know, I told him 45 years old and he was like, you need to get prostate exam. And so, you know, he had to talk me into it. He sweet talked you into it. Shut up. See, that's why people don't be wanting to do it because of stupid stuff like that. Stupid ass <laughs> statements like the one <laughs> you said just made. He had made. to talk you okay? into it. Just asking a question. And, and, and yeah, and he hit you. And the worst, <laughs> the worst part about it, I'm going to tell you the worst part about the prostate exam. What's that? Not making no noise. I will not make <laughs> no noise <laughs> when he... Put that loop on that glove and inserted his finger back there. <laughs> I wanted to scream. I was like, oh, oh, oh. If there was a pillow there, I would have bit it. <laughs> you know, I'm you, if there was a pillow there, I would have bit it. Yeah. But guess what? I'm willing to be uncomfortable. That's right. uh, you know, to know that everything's fine with my prostate. Yeah, I've uh, had it twice, and the first time was uncomfortable because the second time was a good time. <laughs> That's why people don't want to talk about it. It'll go because people like you. 
<laughs> but they, they were like, uh, they, they told my wife, excuse me, can you leave? I'm like, why you want her to leave? No, she can't leave. But they make your wife leave. Or and yo, and leave. by the way, doctors, man, stop talking to us when you do that. Yes, don't just, talk to me, man. Just don't get make, in and get don't, out. Don't, I don't want to hear no jokes. I don't care. Just, just, we, we ain't got to do all that. Bark. Just do what you got to do. Tell me everything good and keep it moving. That's right. Okay? And I don't want to talk about how much you hear me joke on the radio, <laughs> on podcasts and stuff. I don't want to joke in those settings. No. Okay? Just get in and get out and... I'll see you next time. I don't even want to talk after. Just don't even look me in my eyes. Making sound effects sounding like Missy Elliott in the room. What? Like, that's what he said. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? what doctor did you go to? Got me sounding like, because <laughs> I'm trying not to scream. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm really saying is, is this doctor done yet? Is this doctor done yet? <laughs> Why do you got time for that? Oh, man. my goodness. Well, also, shout out to uh, Meek Mill. Africans are mad at Meek Mill. <laughs> First of all, what you mean just Africans? I'm going to tell you what why. What country, brother? I'm going to tell you why. Uh, Meek Mill put on his uh, Twitter or Instagram, do a lot of people play my music in South Africa? South Africa. I remember having a big show there a few years back. How do y'all listen to our music in South Africa? On what pl- platform or in Nigeria? Why are they mad at him for that? Well, because they say, how do you listen to our music in South Africa and Nigeria? He asked what platform, meaning what streaming platform. Some of these countries, uh, uh, some of these streaming platforms aren't available. So is it Tidal? Is it Apple? Is well, it Spotify? Well, we have audio for, from people being upset. You know what you are? EP, a.k.a. Enemy of Progress. Now, listen, have you been to South Africa before? You've never been to South Africa before? Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. Sh- I'm saying... That, that never happened. No, but people are saying I prefer... No, 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 no. First of all, see, that never happened. That I know that that call had nothing to do with what Meek Mill said. Which I, whatever y'all played just now had nothing to do with what Meek Mill said. Well, that, that's the response. And this is some more responses. What? Listen, it's, 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 it's kind of funny. Uh, somebody said, I prefer using the noise of a lion. The sound that comes out of them lion noise pods is something you have to experience when you're down in South Africa. Hold up, wait a minute, Meek. <laughs> somebody said... <laughs> what you think we listen to your music via coconut or jackfruit? Normally we use rocks, <laughs> but on a good day we use trees or we get one person to sing for the whole village. See? Uh, somebody else says, we wait for a bird to fly in, into America and bring a disc for us once in five years. That's then the funny. whole village gather around to play it. Uh... Somebody says, well, it depends on the season. In summer, we hear it through the trunk of an elephant. In spring, the giraffes catch signal and play it out loud. You got me. Uh, Meek says, I was just asking how they listen to music in Africa because I want to handle my business. None of my contracts say they have rights to distribute me in Africa. Basically looking for the money trail. I don't know what platforms used in Africa, which makes sense. That's what he was basically saying, well, like you so, said. You can't say Africa. Africa is a whole continent. So... He- well, South Africa. He said he South said. Africa and Nigeria. So that's what he yes. was saying. He was trying to figure out, I'm sure, what places in South Africa or Nigeria or wherever streams his music because I'm sure he wants to book a show. Well, I'm so, sure he wants to book a tour. Well, so he's well, trying to see who listens, who buys, and well, this, that, and the well, other. South Africa has everything, mm-hmm. by the way. South Africa has Apple. South Africa yes. has Tidal. South Africa has Spotify. They have YouTube music. They have Amazon music. They right. have all those things. Yeah, it's, it's crazy that people are so quick to attack Meek, but really what he was saying, well, you know, what platforms do you listen to? Because he wants to see who streams his music the he most. He said it. I, I know, yeah. yeah. I, know. I mean, but you know, I, I understand because, you know, Meek's reputation precedes him because Meek do be trolling. I just want y'all to know that. Mm-hmm. You think Meek really uses Twitter as his search engine? You think Meek can't Google things for himself? Of you think Meek can't ask an assistant or one of his label friends or, you know, some of executive course. he knows? He can. He be doing that just for engagement a lot of the time. Of course. Come on. Salute to Meek Mill. Mm-hmm. All right. And that is your rumor report. Now, when we come back, we got front page news. Teslin Figaro will be joining us. So don't go anywhere. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Let's start off with some quick sports. Joel Embiid. Last night, he scored 70 points, 18 rebounds, and five assists. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns scored 62 points, 8 rebounds, and 2 assists. And it was the 18-year anniversary of Kobe Bryant's 81-point game against the Raptors. Yeah, I watched uh, the Joel Embiid game and the Carl Anthony Towns game. I didn't know it was the anniversary of Kobe Bryant's 81 points, but I just woke up this morning feeling like I'll give everybody buckets. Like, I was watching that game last night. I was like, y'all, watch Joel Embiid. I'll watch Carl Anthony Towns all below the rim, rim game. Easy. Easy money. Bet on me. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Tez. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody believes him. Good morning, Tez. I, I believe in myself. Okay. 
Good morning, Tez. Good morning, DJ. Good morning, Charlamagne. Peace, Tez. Let's talk about the Supreme Court this morning. Yeah, the Supreme Court, you know, this border crisis is not going away, guys. I mean, it's really, really not. It's becoming more and more of an issue. And the Supreme Court had to step in to resolve a dispute about the razor wire at the border. Take a listen. The Supreme Court ruling in favor of removing sharp razor wire installed by Texas and rivers along the border between U.S. and Mexico. The five to four vote now clears the way for federal agents to actually cut down the wire, which administration officials have called dangerous and inhumane. Now, this razor wire fencing was installed along the Rio Grande River by Texas authorities, a part of a program they call Operation Lone Star. It was an effort launched by Republican Governor Greg Abbott in 2021 to curb illegal immigration. Monday's decision was immediately appealed by the governor. He posted this on Twitter. He said, this is not over. Texas razor wire is an effective deterrent to the illegal crossing crossing that Biden encourages. I will continue to defend Texas constitutional authority to secure the border and prevent the Biden administration from destroying our property. Uh, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton also said the Supreme Court's decision temporary order allows Biden to continue his illegal effort to aid foreign invasion of America. The destruction of Texas borders uh, will not help enforce the law or keep Americans safe. He said this fight is not over and he looks forward to defending our state's sovereignty. Now, last Friday, President Biden did admit, he did say, you know, that the border is not secure. He says he, uh, that is why he continues to ask Congress for more money to fix it. He also said he's willing to work with Republicans and here's his message. The question is for the speaker and the House Republicans, are they ready to act as well? They have to choose whether they want to solve a problem or keep weaponizing issues to score political points against the president. I'm ready to solve the problem. I really am. Massive changes. And I mean it sincerely. Nothing, nothing is going to get done uh, in regards to immigration until Republicans and Democrats can, can get on the same page. And, you know, you, you heard President Biden say he's ready to solve the problem. There is a problem at the border. Saying there is a problem at the border is not a right wing talking point. A lot of idiots will say things like that's MAGA messaging, but it's not. Have some conversations with folks in these sanctuary cities, you know, like New York and Chicago, and ask them how they feel about what's going on at the border. Ask them how, you know, their lives are being inconvenienced and see what they say. Because I, yeah. I, I, I over the past year, you know, people have come up to me here in New York City and one one conversation in particular, and Envy, I told you this months ago, mm -hmm. this one person came up to me in tears, bawling. Because of, uh, you know, what is happening in his neighborhood uh, as a result of what's going on at the border. So these aren't, you know, right wing talking points. This isn't MAGA messaging. This is just, you know, sitting down, having conversations with people who are in these sanctuary cities uh, being inconvenienced, you know, uh, by, 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 by the migrants. But it sounds like it's bull crap, right? And the reason it sounds like it's bull crap is we've been having issues with the border for what? For over 50 years? Forever. 100 years? <laughs> so like, it's like, well, we, we got to fix the problem with the border. We've been had these problems and, and, and they had money to allocate it. They had time to fix it. They had time to try to understand and control it. But they have they don't care about making it better. They talk about it when it's an election year, and then when election year is over, they let things die down and let things go. It's the same thing when we talk about, you know, health care for, for all. It's, they talk about it during election year, after election year. We don't hear about them talk about it anymore. Same thing they talk about school debt and all that. You, you, you hear it election year, and then when it's time for re-election, then you start getting them emails that say, hey, your student loan has been accepted, uh, has been paid. But it's been three years, and we, and we hardly hear about none of the things that really matter to us. Well, President Biden is right, though. It has been politicized. The border has been politicized and weaponized. But if you really care about the people, you know, Republicans and Democrats, y'all will get on the same page and get something done. Right. Well, but, uh, and again, Democrat Mayor Brandon Johnson, Democrat Mayor, uh, New York Mayor, said that it is a problem at the border. So, I mean, it's, it's confirmed it is a problem. And now they're having to deal with the problem. And so now that they're having to deal with the problem, they're saying it's a, it's a migrant pro uh, problem. So, again, people can say it's a, a MAGA talking point or a Democrat talking point, whatever it is. The bottom line is it's a talking point. And, and, when, and somebody needs, <laughs> right, and somebody needs to fix it and need to get on the same page. And okay. yes, President Biden, they will continue to weaponize this. This is how Republicans move. When will Democrats get it? This is how they move. They don't give a damn about you talking about it. I'm really trying to fix it. They're going to continue to keep dropping off migrants in these, some of these sanctuary cities until they force you to get on the same page. And so we're just going to see who's going to fold at the end of the day, Charlemagne. Is it going to be the Democrats? It's going to be Republicans. And, and, but it and, like they're not stopping. And listen, as inhumane and cruel 
as you know them putting those migrants on those buses and putting them on planes and dropping them off in Martha's Vineyard and dropping them off in other sanctuary cities dropping them off in front of Vice President's house as inhumane and cruel as that was it was very very effective because when you had the Democrats you know like the Vice President Kamala Harris and the Mayor Eric Adams and you know others saying things like hey we welcome y'all into our sanctuary cities come 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 and then as it started to become a problem and they had to be like whoa yep. don't come this right. is an issue this is the problem we can't handle it it makes it seem like republicans were right on the issue from the beginning mm-hmm. it's just that it's just that simple just to, just on the surface if you're just looking at the situation it makes it seem like republicans were right uh, on the issue from the beginning but once again republicans and democrats have to come together get on the same page uh, to, 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 to to put some comprehensive immigration reform on the books. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Tez. No problem. And make sure you follow at Teslin Figaro on all social media platforms and subscribe to at Teslin Figaro, uh, her podcast, the Straight Shot No Chaser podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. All right. Well, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Now, JT from the City Girl said that it is rude to comment on someone's weight, whether they are gaining or losing. So that is the question. 800-585-1051. Is it rude to comment on someone's physical appearance, their weight? I mean, yeah, because you don't know how they lost the weight. You know what I mean? Um. They might have lost the weight because they're sick. They might have lost the weight because they're on crack. You know, they might have gained the weight because they depressed and been eating. They might have gained the weight because they they fat. They might have gained. I mean, there's all type of reasons. You don't never know why. But it's also because maybe they worked out and you you telling them, hey, you lost some weight makes them feel good, makes them go harder because people are actually seeing the weight loss. I think we know the difference between somebody losing weight because of exercise no. and somebody losing weight because they had a surgery. Oh, and, or Zip, what's sick. that thing called? Ozip, was Ozempic? You can definitely tell with Ozempic. Can you? Yes, in a lot of ways. But by the way, you can there's a difference between in how you say it too. Like if you're like, oh wow, you, you look good. You lost weight. You know? I don't say things like that because that means that I that that I, that I thought you was fat to begin with. <laughs> so, that, so, that's so, it. so if you was fat to begin with and I acted like I didn't notice <laughs> when you lose the weight, I'm acting like I ain't notice either. Cause that ain't none of my business. But if somebody's working out and you can see that they're working out, you can say, oh, you're losing some weight. Stay in the gym. It depends, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> if they just getting in shape and they got muscles, I understand. But I'm telling you, if they was fat before, right, and you never acknowledged it, how do you acknowledge somebody being fat? That's my point. So, don't igno- so when they lose the weight, don't acknowledge it either. Jeez. Even if they say something about it around you, don't say nothing. Eight hundred. I know that's right. That's what I'd be like. like, They they say I lost weight. Like I know that's right. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I don't count it at all. Five eight five one zero five one. Let's discuss this. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call eight hundred five eight five one zero five one to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, we're talking about something that JT from the City Girls had said. What did JT, the philosopher, say? JT said, uh, it is rude to comment on someone's weight, whether they are gaining or losing. So the question is, do you agree? 800-585-1051. I, I don't disagree. Like, I, I, I mind my business when it comes to stuff like that because... I don't know how it happened. And I've had enough experience in my life commenting on people's weight loss or weight gain and it not being something positive. You know what I'm saying? Only physiques I compliment you on is is men when I can tell they working out or, or, or women when you can tell they working out like the muscles are visible. You know what I mean? And what I will say to those people is you're not missing no push-ups. Something simple like that. But as far as just weight loss and weight gain, I mind my business because I don't know why they lost the weight and I don't know why they gained the weight. Yeah. So I just mind my business. Yeah, I, I mind my business as well. Uh, and that's because one time uh, there was a, a woman that was, uh, we were all on a plane together. She's in the industry. Um, and I thought she was pregnant. And I mm-hmm. said, congratulations. <laughs> and she wasn't pregnant. Yeah, that's the worst. And, and, it, and it stuck because she was like, I'm not pregnant. I, and it just hit me and, and I said after that I will never compliment or say congratulations or say you're losing weight or you're getting never again that woman hasn't eaten anything since what year was that this, this was uh, before the breakfast club a year before the breakfast she, club so she ain't ate nothing in 15 years <laughs> she has not had a solid meal in 15 years because of that one comment one of our producers Sim Sim was in here Sim said Sim, where's Sim at Sim Sim 
Tell Sim come here because I want Sim to tell his story. Now Sim just told us three Sim, stories. Which, which I just want the about? first one. I want oh, the first one about how she walked over to the dude in church. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and if you ever been a, if you if you if you know Sim and you met Sim, Sim is like a cheerleader. Right, Sim will hype you up. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Sim will like really, 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 really hype you up. Right. And when she hypes you up, you know, here she come. Here she come. Sim. Now, Sim is one of the Breakfast Club producers. She's a Breakfast Club producer. Like you said, if you've uh, been up here, if you've the, definitely met Sim before. Tell the first story, Sim, about the, the dude you you, you ruined oh, his no. life in church. Oh, All right, so... <laughs> It's not funny. God bless the dead. It was a guy I was really cool with at my church. He was an older man. And he started like putting off weight, but his bone structure was looking real good. So I'm like, oh, he looks really nice. So I start bringing him up. I'm thinking I'm hyping him. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like okay, come on, diet plan. Blah, blah, blah. I'm doing it big. It's somebody behind him that's giving me the signal like, stop, stop, mm -hmm. stop. Because I didn't know he was sick. So after he walked, because he's not giving me no energy back when I'm telling him like, oh, Man. you look good. Mm -hmm. Then he walks away and the guy tells me like, oh, he's sick. He has cancer. And he died a week later. You killed him. No, <laughs> no it was you. It was you. It was all you. You put him in a very deep depression Dang. that he couldn't get out of. God bless that man. Oh, Dang. my okay? gosh. And so once again, this is why you shouldn't compliment nobody on their weight. And Sim is a cancer survivor. Yes, she is. And Sim was taking pictures of herself in the gym posting them on Instagram thinking she you know losing weight you know what I mean she working I out I was so proud you know <laughs> Whole time she was sick. Sick, yeah. Whole time she was sick. Yeah. But she survived. She did survive. Congratulations, yes, Sim. Sim. Hello, who's this? Hi, this is Zoe from Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Zoe. Now, uh, what do you think? What should you think people should comment on people's weight gain or, or weight loss? Uh, I think absolutely not. Personally, right now, I'm going through some health issues, and you know, it kind of forces me not to be able to exercise how I used to. So I've gained a few pounds, and people, you know, if they would comment on that, that would suck because that's not my fault. See what and I'm then saying? on the other token, you know, people can lose weight because of health. So I just feel like unless someone's talking about their health journey on social media and talking about being in the gym, you should just not talk about it. That's right. The only time I'm commenting on somebody's weight, like I said, is if you can tell visibly they've been in the gym. Like, you can see the muscles. Right. Like, oh, shoot. Like, they look like they just did a bid. And I'm going to tell you something. If you was fat and I never said nothing about you being fat... If you do whatever you got to do to lose weight, I ain't commenting on that either. Mm -mm. I'm act like I, I'm act like you the same person that I knew when you was fat. But but there's nobody that tells you what it is like your mama or your grandmother. Your mother and your grandmother be like, you gaining some pounds on your boy. <laughs> that, that, that that's mama or grandmama. Well, they have the right to say that because they know that whatever it is you're dealing with, you're going to be vulnerable with them because that's your mama that's and right. your grandma. So that's if right. you are sick or depressed. You can really have a conversation with them. That's what you feel comfortable having a conversation with. 800-585-1051. If you're just joining us, we're talking about JT from the City Girls. She put out a tweet yesterday that said, uh, is it rude to comment on someone's weight, whether they are gaining or losing? That is the question. Call us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's Topic Time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, uh, we're taking something that JT said and making it a topic. JT said that, is it rude to comment on someone's weight gain or weight loss? That is the question, 800-585-1051. We got Michael on the line. Michael says, hell nah, it ain't rude at all. Michael, what up? What's up, my good guy? So this is what I want to get off my chest, DJ Charlemagne. And how you all buying all our name, together? DJ Charlemagne, yeah, yeah. the God. <laughs> okay, yeah, bro. you know that. That's how, that's how we rocking. Y'all gonna have to leave Trick Daddy, CeeLo Green, and Big Boy in in 2002. You know what I mean? Like, don't take that into February. I y'all got that in heavy rotation. I hear it twice a week, for real, for real. I don't even know what you're talking what about. about. What you talking about? Put that draw up and let that sunshine in, or whatever that song is. Oh yeah, you know I don't mean? Mean, yeah. We don't I, we don't have nothing to do with the music, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, no. I, I, I I agree with you though. Hey, but yeah, I had to get that off my chest, and I ain't mean to blame y'all, then, but y'all definitely been taking the heat. I've been saying y'all bogus as hell. That's on me. <laughs> thank, okay. thank, thanks, thanks, Michael. All right. You ain't say nothing about the weight loss. Oh yeah, hell yeah. You can tell anybody you trying to lose weight. You know, I, I smoke a lot of weed, so I've been losing weight anyway. I ain't got to tell nobody, but. But you know, yeah, you definitely want to let it be known, especially if you putting that work in and you trying to, man. I shout out to everybody that's doing their weight training thing. That's good for mental health too. Shout out to all the man, you be putting us heavy on that. So you know, work out, look good. Yeah, tell people, be proud of yourself. Let people know your accomplishments. I'm definitely letting people know when I lose weight. 
Now, you said something in this whole conversation. You said that you smoke weed, so you're definitely losing weight. My brother, if you're smoking so much weed that you're losing weight, might not be weed and something is wrong. Yeah, because usually it's the other way around. You, you smoke weed and you eat after and you gain a little weight sometimes, I guess. Man, I just man, I just smoke, go to work, go to sleep. That's it, that's all. So I know I'm losing weight. I, I'm barely eating in the weight anyway. I ain't got no time to eat, man. I got to hit that clock, get this money, take care of them kids, man. That don't sound like you're taking care of your mental health, my brother, by doing it. By, by, hey. It sounds like you're staying busy as a response to some trauma. That's what it sounds like to me. But I'm not no therapist, so don't listen to me. Have a good one, brother. Hey, love. Hello, about to cry? Huh? He's about to cry. Hey, what's up? Charlamagne, the God and Envy. How y'all doing? Jeez, Queen, what's up, Kim? You? How you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. I just talked to y'all last week about some diet stuff. Now I'm talking to y'all again. Okay. What's up? Um, I don't like when people compliment me on my weight because um, when I gained weight, people used to say, oh, how beautiful I look. But then guys I dated would be like, oh, you need to lose weight. I don't date girls that get over a certain weight. But then when you lose all the weight, then it's, oh, you lost too much weight, but you still cute, though. I don't need nobody to compliment me or uh, disregard me on my weight to com- to talk to me. I understand. So that's not a good feeling. Okay. Well, thank you, Kim. Thank you. Can I shout out my podcast? Go ahead, Mama. Um... What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Kim, from the Patio with Kim podcast on that Feeling Podcast Network. Thank you to the Breakfast Club, DJ MV and Charlamagne the God for letting me shout y'all out. Oh, hello, hello, Queen. Hello, who's this? This is uh, Janan from Detroit. What, what up, though? What up, though? So we ask hey. about losing weight. Is it, don't, is it... don't, first of all, don't call up here about no lions, first of all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can start off with the lions. No, yeah, start off with Congratulations the lions. And then, to y'all. Hey, I appreciate that. But I'm going to say this, man. I'm big. We know we big. So we don't need the the commentary as far as, you know, you gain weight. But tell us that we lost weight. It boosts the motivation to lose, lose more. How much you weigh? Uh, I was 455, now I'm 315. Oh, that's great. How tall are you? 6'2". Uh, oh, my brother. Now, that's see, I got to congratulate you on that. Absolutely. You 455 to 315, what you been doing? Uh, basically, stop drinking, drink a lot of water, uh, and stop eating every time I was hungry. I respect that, okay. brother. Keep going. Keep going on your journey, man. Absolutely, brother. Appreciate you. Have a good one. And it was a salute to all the Olympic gold medalists out there. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of Olympic gold medalists. You know, they out there, you know, using Olympic to lose weight with, as well. Yeah, I don't think they can hear us. They probably in the bathroom, right? Doesn't it make you have diarrhea? Yeah, like I heard crazy? it makes you have really bad diarrhea. Mm. What's the moral of the story? I mean, the moral of the story is, you know, you do what makes you feel comfortable. Me personally, I am not comp- I am not uh, commenting on anybody's weight loss nope. or weight gain just because I've learned my lesson, you know, throughout life. And not only have I learned my lesson, I've seen other people learn their lesson. So the only time I'm commenting on somebody's physique is if they look like they just came home from doing a bed, like they diesel. You know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. can tell they really been in the gym. Other than that, minding my business. All right. All right, well, when we come back, we got your rumor report. Kanye West, he's back in the news. Uh, Yeah, we'll tell you why, all right? Don't move, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning on this Tuesday. So we got rumors coming up. We got to tell you about Kanye West. He's back in the news. He was out and about with his wife and got harassed a little bit. Uh, so we'll tell you all about that when we come back. What up, Charlemagne? Hey, I want to tell y'all something, man. Hmm? But I forgot. No, I didn't forget. Hold on. No, you know what? I I tell y'all. How much time we got, right? We got a little bit of time. Yeah, what you got? We um, you know, salute to South Carolina State University. Mm-hmm. That's uh my mother's alma mater. Mm-hmm. And you know, I set up a, a scholarship fund there called the Ford Family Endowed Scholarship. And mm-hmm. the Ford Family Endowed Scholarship is open to current South Carolina State University sophomores. And senior students, uh, you must be a South Carolina resident and you must major in either English or communications or related fields or studies in mental health related fields like psychology, counseling or psychiatry. And uh, you can register for that Ford Family Endowed Scholarship right now. You can apply um, at bit.ly slash Ford Family SCSU scholarship that's bit.ly slash ford family scsu scholarship the deadline is february 16th 2024 at 11 59 p 
a.m. Eastern. So you can go look and see what all uh, the requirements are mm-hmm. to uh, receive the Ford Family Endowed Scholarship. So drop on the clues bombs for South Carolina State University. That's my uh, mother's alma mater. So I set that scholarship fund up there. All right. Yes. Salute to everybody at SCSU. That's right. Go apply right now. All right. Big.ly slash Ford Family SCSU Scholarship. All right. When we come back, we got your room reports. Don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Kanye West. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is The Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Right. right. Now, Kanye West was out in L.A. with his wife, Bianca, and uh, as they were leaving, I guess the restaurant or the store they was leaving, uh, a a gentleman came up to them and started yelling at him, started cursing him out. Uh, The man appears to be homeless, appears to have some problems, but this went viral yesterday at the man yelling at him. I am the real, homie. You got no chance. Look at you trying to talk to the white boy so f***ing bad. You ain't f***ing boy. Just know that. He thinks he's so smart, so new. So nifty. You ain't sh- boy. Don't at least not play with like Cardi too. I don't know f- boy. I am a god, homie. Lucifer, homie. You ain't sh- boy. You ain't bad. Trust me. For one, homie. I ain't no kid cutting. I ain't cutting, dog. I'm the realest, boy. I am the one. Not hope, not you. I ain't Lupe Fiasco. I ain't most deaf, dog. This is my f- block. I am homeless. 12 years, gang. I ain't listening since 07. Not since graduation. Only little f- boys from my sh- on my sh- on my sh- He's homeless, but he clearly got social media. He clearly <laughs> got a smartphone. <laughs> yeah, he did. Because he is up on all the current events. Every, clearly. Every, that man's every, pit, that man shot every single news headline we've seen about Kanye in the past couple of weeks at him. Kid Cudi, Lupe Fiasco, most deaf. And Lupe Fiasco was beefing with Park with Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi. He had nothing to do with Kanye, but he just threw it all out. And I mean, I want to say that he could have been under the substance. I want to say he could have been dealing with mental health issues, but it sounded like he just don't like Kanye West. Mm-hmm. You know, and he he was homeless. Yeah, he, well, the guy said he was homeless. But right before Kanye, well, him was, and Kanye dressed alike, similar. Okay, similar. But right before uh, Kanye was telling paparazzi where to get the angles to take the right pictures, and I guess the guy seen it, and then he just was like, just went off. Did Kanye have security with him? No. Yeah, that's kind of crazy because nah. you know, I don't, you do regardless of whether you on sub, on a substance or dealing with mental health issues, if you out with your wife. And something like that happened. You on guard. Now, nah, but Kanye got in the car fast. So he got in his truck fast. His wife got in the truck fast. And he didn't pull off. He waited. He left. He, you know, uh, rolled the window down just a little bit to hear the guy. Until the guy finished talking. And then he drove off. Uh, Kanye needs to have security. Mm-hmm. That's what Kanye needs. Or oh, Eva Marcel talks about uh, finessing her way onto America's next top model. I went to a fake callback. I slid to a callback that I, w- I wasn't I wasn't there at the initial audition to be called back to. <laughs> Quick origin story for Top Model for me. I was in Atlanta. I found out they were doing auditions for Top Model. I went with my best friend, but I worked at Dillard's and I couldn't be late for work. The line was crazy. It was at Lenox. I said, I'm not waiting for this line. So then I go go to work. The audition's in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. So I decided to drive my Nissan Sentra down to Memphis, Tennessee with a donut tire, any money, walked in there. So the lady <laughs> asked me, she goes, so where do we first see you uh, i said well i first saw y'all in atlanta okay and lennox y'all were casting and she's like looking like that michelle do mock, not, michelle mock I, do, <laughs> I do not see your face but tell me something about yourself and i d- literally just debo my way through and from there they had me wait and i made it to semifinal rounds and i ended up on the show oh that's what god wanted to happen clearly wow, wow. I'm surprised she even was able to get in because usually they check your name, check your, your your license and all that. But she she finessed away, so it was meant for her. Uh, lastly, Chris Brown and uh, there was a viral uh, video of Chris Brown and Quavo sitting at a fashion show. The reason that it went viral is because uh, they were sitting side by side at the Rude Fashion Show. It was uh, Paris Fashion Week, and those two weren't seeing eye to eye a couple of years ago with Chris Brown's. Uh, ex-girlfriend Karuchi uh, Tran so uh, there was a problems but Chris Brown put on Instagram yesterday can't pick who you sit by F all that growth ish Igga not finna fumble my bag for a little Iggas so uh, I'm glad they were able to sit because uh, people say well I mean he didn't want to mess up the bag but 
old Chris Brown, it would have been a, it would have been a situation. But I'm glad they were those brothers would both be able to sit next to each other, watch the fashion show, and then leave with nothing able to happen. I thought I, that was pretty I, good. I, 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 this is how I know I'm old because I don't even know what the hell's going on. What, what did Chris Brown and uh, Quavo have issues over? Um, I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago after Chris Brown don't. stopped dating Karuchi, Quavo started dating Karuchi, and then mm-hmm. there was a big problem. They got into an argument at a, a parking facility, and they were yelling at each other, cursing at each other. So it was a little hostile for a minute. So the fact that those mm-hmm. brothers could sit next to each other and you know not like each other and still do what they want to do and not get into an altercation, there was no fights, no nothing was. I don't remember none of that. that. I'm, I'm Kishal, I don't remember none of that. I don't know anything right. about that. All right. Well, but, that is your rumor report. Well, I'm glad that they know how to act at them white people functions. Because if that would have been a black event, they probably would have been, you know, all in each other's face and everything else, more Maybe. than likely. So I hope that, you know, they can keep that same type of energy everywhere and not just in that setting in Paris at a Fashion. whatever designer's rude. event that was. That was rude. I want y'all to, who? Rude. The hell is rude? It's clothing line. R H U D E. Never heard of it. Oh, I thought you were saying he was rude. No, the clothing line mean? is rude. That's the name of the clothing line. Rude. No, R-H- I never, I never heard of that. D-E. But my thing is, um, simply keep that same energy at all times, not just when you, you know, at those type of events. Hmm. Don't know. Right. Don't that that's that. Don't don't be knowing how to act. Okay, when you're in front of them folk, we got to know how to act at all times. I'm just glad because clearly it ain't that serious, act. right? Because because if it was that serious, it'd be on site anyway, right? Correct. So you know, I'm glad nothing happened, and I don't want anything to happen anywhere. Mm-hmm. But you know, I just wish we would, we could keep that same energy at every function. Correct. Not just uh, functions for rude people or whatever the <laughs> hell you said. Forget it. It's a rude. Forget it. Who you giving your donkey to, man? That's your man. Four it. after the hour. We need a guy named Robert Brush. He's from Florida. He needs to come to the congregation. We would like to have a word with him. And this story is kind of triggering because uh, uh, I've been in this situation. But we'll discuss. All right, we'll get to that next. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. <laughs> Charlotte, Some donkey today is just saw themselves. I've been watching Charlotte, man. I was ready for it. I never heard of donkey the other day. What is it? I'm a donkey. Say it again, Charlotte, man. I'm a donkey. Yes. You are a donkey. I'll show you how to act a donkey. Everything you know, you know, you know, that Charlotte is saying is true. Charlotte, man. Yeah, that's right. Charlotte, man. 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 Yes, donkey today for Tuesday, January 23rd goes to a Florida man named Robert Brush. Now, what does your uncle Sharla always tell you about the great state of Florida? The craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida, and today is no exception. See, Robert Brush is on drugs, ladies and gentlemen. Narcotics. All right, he is an addict, a user, a fiend, a junkie, a druggie, a space cadet. Yes, and not just any drug. Robert is on that speed, that crank, that ice, that chalk, that Scooby Snack. Yes, Robert Brush does meth. Yes, he loves chicken flipping. Okay, he gets fried, and the reason I know he gets fried is because of how he got caught. See, deputies pulled Robert over and asked for his license because they noticed the tailgate on a on a on his pickup truck that was covering the license plate. So they pulled him over. Now, when they asked for his license and he handed it over, deputies noticed a white crystalline substance on it. See, some of y'all have watched enough movies or had enough real life experiences to know that cards like driver's license are often used to break up drugs, okay? Not just driver's license, credit cards, all right? Amex, Visa, playing cards, everything from the big joker to draw four is used to break up drugs, especially powdered ones. Now, when cops saw the white crystalline substance on the card, they tested it and it came back positive for meth. Then Robert did what most humans would do in that situation. And that's a lie. Okay, and he told deputies he didn't know there was drugs on the license and there was nothing illegal in the car. Welp, we'll see how smart you are when the canines come. And that's exactly what happened. All right, dogs came, sniffed the car, and tucked between the driver's seat and center console. Cops found a baggie filled with what appeared to be a large amount of the same substance on the license. And it was 14.23 grams of that no dose. 14.23 grams of cookies. 14.23 grams of that Christina. Now, it's not lost on me that this man's name is Robert Brush. Okay, he, Robert Brush, had a brush with the law, and that brush with the law resulted in his arrest, all because Robert Brush didn't brush the drugs off his license. Now, I know it's probably Robert Brush's desire to stand up and brush himself off because he made a mistake, and he wants to ask for forgiveness. That's what life is about, okay? When at first you don't succeed, brush yourself off and try again. But Robert Brush, you must first go get treated for your disease. Okay, addiction is a disease, and it's a disease that jail can't cure. I don't care if you're a black person addicted to crack or a white person addicted to meth. Prison is not where you should be, but we all know America 
does not know how to solve problems. So being that we don't know how to solve problems, we will never, 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 never ever be able to assist people in properly overcoming their addiction. So we will continue to criminalize the disease of addiction and send people to jail when we should be sending them to rehab. And even though I can sympathize with Robert Brush and his disease, it still won't stop me from giving him the credit he deserves for being stupid, even if it's a le legit reason for him to be. Please give Robert Brush the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are the donkey mm. of the day. Now, the Polk County Sheriff's Office said, amazingly, it's not the first time someone has handed over their license covered with an illegal substance. And that doesn't surprise me because I've had the same exact experience. What you mean? I've told y'all this a million times. You've heard this story, okay? A million times. I'm that uncle that will tell you the same story over and over. Tell us again. Okay, it's even in one of my books, okay? I don't know if it's Black Privilege or Shook Ones, both available wherever you buy books right now. But I was riding with someone in Fort Lee, New Jersey, and I was with that person the night before as well and we got pulled over twice by the police in Harlem this was 2007 or 2008 I don't recall now being that we got pulled over twice in Harlem by the time we got pulled over for the, for the, for the third time in 36 hours in Fort Lee, New Jersey I was like these guys are pros okay when the police came to the window I told the police trust me officer they know the procedure license and registration right hand it over so the driver gave him his license and registration and the cops was like step out the car Let's search the car. Still normal, very routine thing to happen when you black. Okay, no need to debate or argue about it. Uh, and me being the Kiki Palmer ass Negro that I am, never taking things serious, always want to get a little hee haw, a ha ha, and a kiki. Okay, I'm telling the officers, excuse me, officer, why are you harassing us, searching us for no reason? A murderer just drove by. Oh, another car just drove by, trunk full of guns and cocaine. Next thing I know, all I heard was, put your hands behind your back. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm like, damn, I done went too far with the key keys. Okay, come to find out, the driver <laughs> had handed him his license and registration and insurance and like this little plastic thing, mm -hmm. and also in the plastic thing was five grams of cocaine. So they Jesus. took us all to jail because he didn't claim it until we got to the jail. So I've been in that situation. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. Yes. Uh, much more much more normal occurrence than uh, I think last week uh, a couple days ago we reported that 50 Cent is practicing uh, abstinence in 2024 so I guess there's a lot of people that go through this phase where they practice abstinence or, or celibacy so we're asking 800-585-1051 does abstinence and celibacy actually help you in your life Hell whether it's yeah. work whether it's love, whether it's friendships, that is the question. It helps you to focus, absolutely. 800-585-1051. Let's discuss. So you've been through that. Been through what? Not having sex for a while. Uh, Yeah, but I mean, I think that the, the it, it just helps. It helps with uh, discipline. I mean, that's like even when people, you know, uh, do Ramadan and they fast, like, you know, sex is one of the things that you abstain from. Mm. It just helps you to focus. So you've yeah. done it before and it helped you with your, your focus. How long have you abstained for? I mean, I've done Ramadan before. Yeah. Mm. What's that? I forgot how long Ramadan is. I ain't done it in so long. Mm. 30 days? I don't know. How long is Ramadan? How long is Ramadan? You know? I don't, I don't know. know. Is it Ramadan, yeah. anybody? No? No? But yeah, no. absolutely. Ramadan, Ramadan. I, know, I know people that do stuff like that all the time. Oh. Okay. And people practice the uh, not ejaculating. Remember Kevin Gates talked about that? That's right. Yeah. I've never done that. I got six kids. It just keeps going and on. All right, but we'll discuss when we come back. 800-585-1051. Does abstinence and celibacy actually help you in it, your life? It, it has to. Work. Let's discuss. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Daddy, call him up. Oh, call him up. Oh. Tell, tell him. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne, the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us, we're talking about abstinence. Now, this conversation comes from 50. 50 said he's going to practice abstinence for 2024. And we're asking, does abstinence and celibacy actually help in your life? We're talking work, finding love, friendships, and all that. Let's discuss. 800-585-1051. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I got six kids. There is no abstinence. Uh, but I've been married for 22 years. Yes, abstinence absolutely does, uh, you know, cause you to focus. You know what I mean? Abstinence causes you to focus because it causes you to focus on other things in your life that are important to you. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that we probably neglect because sex is always on our brain. So, yeah, I absolutely believe abstinence can uh, 
increase your focus. I mean, anything that you give up that you love to do that you feel has a hold on you in some way, shape or form. If you decide to, you know, make the sacrifice to not indulge in it for a while. Yeah, it's going to cause you to focus. I don't care if it's sex. I don't care if it's alcohol. I don't care if it's weed. You know what I mean? I don't care if it's uh, a fast food, like little things like that, switching up your diet. All of that is good for your mental and emotional well-being, 100%. And I think what you said is 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 perfect. If something has a hold on you that you need it, whether you're uh, somebody that enjoys watching porn or you have to have it so much that you'll miss work, you'll miss things, it's all a thing. Yes, then I, I, I believe that. Whatever you said, not just abstinence, but those things that you do need to give up and clear your mind and, and, and think a lot clearer. Because you got to be specific. When you say abstinence, you got to say abstinence, abstaining from what? Right. I think people hear the word abstinence and they just think sex, but no. Abstinence increases productivity all across the board depending on what you're abstaining from. You might abstain mm -hmm. from, like I said, alcohol. You might abstain from drugs. You might abstain from staying up all goddamn night and getting you some proper sleep, you know? Abst abstaining from negative people. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I guess abstaining from sex can absolutely increase your focus. Was there anything that you had to uh, abstain from? I abstained from all of those things. I abstained from sex. I mm -hmm. abstained from, you know, bad foods. I abstained from drugs. I abstained. I abstained from alcohol. Like, yeah, I had a lot of bad habits. A lot of terrible, terrible mm -hmm. habits. I was never really a drinker or, or none of those things. The only thing I had to abstain was I was um, into. Um, it's gonna sound crazy. But I was into chasing the check. Like I would travel every weekend on the road to DJ. I would travel every weekend to go work. And I gave it up for about two months. And it was the best decision of my life. Yeah. But now I'm back on the road. I ain't, I ain't doing no more. You but. back chasing checks, huh? Mm. Shut the F up, man. Mm. That's why I don't like you. That's mm. why I don't talk to you. Mm. That's why That's mm. why me and you not eye to eye mm. no more. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that's why you're not bae no more. Hello, who's this? <laughs> this is KC. What's wrong with him? KC, what's up, man? What's good with y'all? You ever have a co-worker, KC, you just want to punch in the gut? Hell yeah. <laughs> but we're not talking about that. That's another topic for another day. punch me in the day. gut for things that come out of his mouth? <laughs> I'm just sitting here. You know what I'm saying? Red, we all just sitting here thinking, why would, now why would he say that? <laughs> you thinking. Nobody else is thinking. You thinking. Oh, everybody's thinking. No, it. no, they're not. Read the YouTube comments nope. later. They, right? We, we all on the same page. Nope. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> KC, anyway. Good morning, KC. Good morning. Good morning. We're talking about abstinence and celibacy. Let's talk about it. All right. Sir, we didn't say abstain from talking <laughs> when you call into the breakfast club. We said, how do you feel about abstaining from sex, sir? Oh, man. And listen, practicing abstinence, there's, there's no way, man. Uh, I, some of my best work comes after after a night of putting in work, if you understand me. Like a clear mind? You got a clear mind? Clear mind all, all day long. I get it. You know, you have a, you know you have that long day and you got to go clear your mind at the end of the day. I mean, there's nothing like that feeling, man. So I, I don't know about that. I feel, I feel too wound up if I practice abstinence. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Hello, who's this? Peace, it's Rashad. Rashad, good morning. Yeah, good morning, brother. Good morning, Rashad. We're talking about uh, abstaining from sex. Uh, have you done it? What's the pros? What's the cons? Talk to us, brother. Well, I feel like, you know, it's about, it's definitely like Charlotte said, it's about discipline, you know what I'm saying, self-control, but it's all about your situation, too, because you can have a spouse that may not be on that same frequency and it could cause a problem. You That's see true. what I'm saying? So yes. it's about your pros and cons. Like, what's your purpose? Yeah, I mean, you know what, though? But maybe both of y'all, that's something both of y'all can try together. If you're trying to get stronger mentally, emotionally, spiritually, maybe you and your partner can sit down and say, yo, for 30 days, let's do this. You switch your diet. Right. You know, you switch your, 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 your consumption. And when I mean consumption, I mean the things that you watch, the things that you take in on your phone, the things that you put in your body food-wise, drink-wise. Mm -hmm. It could be very fulfilling, man. Thanks. All right, brother. All right, peace. Brothers ain't got too many words this morning, huh? 800 5 Talking about a very sensitive subject. 800-585-1051. We're talking of abstaining from sex, all right? Abstinence or celibacy. Have you done it? Does it work for you? Let's discuss this. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about uh, 50 Cent. You know, 50 Cent the other day talked about uh, abstaining from sex in 2024. He said he wants to focus on a lot of the things he has going on. His liquor brand, Branson. Of course, uh, the studio that they're building in Louisiana. So we're asking, have you done it? Does it work for you? And we have Mel on the line. Mel, good morning. Good morning. We're talking about abstinence this morning. Have you practiced it? Did it work for you? I did. I practiced it with my now husband uh, for six years. The six years that we dated and were engaged in everything, we didn't do it. Wow. And I think it was the, the healthiest thing because it's like you have to connect on another realm. Because you can have sex with anybody, but you can't connect 
you know, mentally, emotionally, spiritually with everybody. And when you put that time in, then the sex is like a bonus. I got you. You know what I mean? Yep. What, uh, what, uh, what other benefits did you feel, like mentally, emotionally, spiritually? Everything else we had to connect in that way. Like it was... The, the sex was at the bottom of the bo- of the bottom of the list. So it was like, can this man pray for me? Can we, you know, help each other provide? Because in this day and age, we can try to put all the pressure on the man to provide, but we can't. So it's like, can we get through this together? Can uh, we get through each other mentally when things are going bad? Like we had to build all of that stuff, and we discovered it, got engaged, got married, and our on our wedding night was the first time we were together. And it was wonderful. Now we're seven years in, two kids. So yeah, I think it helps. True, okay. true, okay. true. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello, I'm who's ready this? To go next. Go ahead and book this room. You know, Hello? Monique, who are you yelling at? My boyfriend. Oh, why are you yelling at your boyfriend so early in the morning? Because he's, he's just getting on my nerves. Okay, well, yeah. well we, we, we're talking about abstaining from sex. That's well, what sound like the problem is. Sound like y'all <laughs> sound like, you know, he's trying to be a better man and practicing abstinence and you ain't having it. No, that's not it. Trust, that's the problem. Game up the poom poom. Should have did it. <laughs> when I was celibate for three years, my life was great. I had no issues, no problems. Dang. When you have sex, it just brings on drama. Yep, especially when you letting them hit raw, right? And you know this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so how can how can you overcome the drama? Are you going to go back into celibacy? Are you going to abstain? I am. I'm done. I I, I got to give it up for a minute. Can we can we speak to him? No, he was on the phone. Oh, sorry. he at work. Oh, I'm well, sorry. He, he, yeah, Man, he, just, he, just, he just trying to make some plans for later because you know what you got planned. So you know, stop it. Don't do, to, that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. What I got planned is to get on a plane to go back to my house. That's what I got planned for. Damn, is that bad? That bad. Why he ain't acting right, man? Because y'all do what y'all do. Ain't no y'all. No, you don't put us in that. Don't say y'all. Don't put. Then what is he hey, doing? I'm just saying. What's he doing? Acting weird. Well, you know, it's- first of all, you know, we live in two different states. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know what he's doing while I'm not here. I know I'm being a good girl when I'm in Texas, but I have no idea. What he- now, I don't know now, because if you out here, you know, uh, accusing him of things and, you know, you feel, you know, you feel like, you know, he may be doing something. How we know that's not a guilty conscience talking. Mm. The, the proof is in the pudding, baby. OK, well, you know, we lay next to each other and your phone going off at 11, 12 o'clock at night. Who is that? Somebody Your homeboy wanna... get a tire change. What, no. What's up? First of all, I don't know about you, but a lot of a lot of men that I know have their phones set at eleven o'clock to remind them to pray. So mm. a lot of times when the phone is going <laughs> off that time of night, they they want to say a little prayer right before they go to bed. So you just thinking the worst for no reason, and I don't understand why. You know, black Probably. men don't cheat. Let's not go there. Okay. All right. I won't talk about prayer then. You know how we <laughs> women we have an intuition. You have a what? And nine times out of ten, intuition. we right. Not always. That one time is the devil talking to you. The devil always want to try to ruin a good thing. And you might be, you might be right. Get that man a what? chance. Get that man a chance. Go through his phone. You know, ask Whoa. him. Say, say, let me, let me, let oh, me see no. your phone. I, that's what I don't do. Ask him to let you see then. Say, yo, let me see your phone. Let me see who texting you at 11 o'clock at night. And when you see that, it's, you know, uh, uh, the the prayer line. Yeah, Christian reminding Mingle him guy, prayer, Christian Mingle you're prayer feel line. really bad. That's right. Not Christian Mingle. So, DJ Envy, that mean he on a date inside? Envy stupid, man. Christian Mingle ma'am, prayer line. They send out prayers every, uh, every uh, stupid, night at 11 o'clock. Ma'am, Envy stupid, please, ma'am. Please. <laughs> please. Okay? I don't go through phones. That's what he do. That man. I, here, here is my phone. You can do what you want to do. I'm not going to go through your phone because I try to trust. But when my fighting senses go off, <laughs> there's something going wrong. Well, for all the brothers out there, you know, you can always go to T.D. Jake's Ministries, man, and you can get your prayer requests. You know what I'm saying? You can go and always think the worst, man. Black men don't cheat. You're right. My next one probably won't. And you know, oh, yo, wow. Next one. wow. But you know, you're in his house right now. Wow. And if he's allowing you in his house, that means he ain't got nothing to hide. I'm sh- uh, does it or, or does he have them tamed and controlled? Damn. You're hey, tough. my babe coming. You can't. You're, uh-uh. you're a tough cookie. I'm just saying. I mean, if that is the that case. Advocate. If that is the case, he a legend. You gotta get, you <laughs> How you gonna be doing that? No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying I don't believe. I don't believe that to be the case. But if it is the case, yes, those ladies respect you. You can't date a woman that don't respect your main girl, man. She's, she's supposed to be. She's You're right, and I'm glad. If the they're out that, there, they are respecting me. I appreciate you're that. Right. They she's supposed to be right. out here. You're not helping right. That's right. That's the point. They that's shouldn't right. be there at all.
Yeah. The moral of the story is practice after this. I understand. I'm with you. I'm with you, Queen. When you going back home? <laughs> I'm supposed to go back home on the third, but it looks like I'm going back home today. Damn it, Charlamagne. See what you done did? <laughs> you done made this little Lord run away this lady run away. I don't know what they got going on, man. God bless you, Queen. Well, Monique, have a good one. God bless you. Where you Let calling from? I'm in Baltimore right ba- now. Baltimore, okay. And you, and you from Houston, though. You going back to Houston? San Antonio. Oh, San Antonio. Oh, San Antonio. All right. Well, you yeah. have a good one, Mama. Good luck. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, just ruin that whole relationship. You know what Charles Barkley say about the women in San Antonio, but I'm going to mind my business because I don't know no women from San Antonio. That's one right there. But salute to you. God damn. All right. When we come back, we got your rumor report. Stay right there. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Mary J. Blige. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on the breakfast club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. Now, Mary J. Blige talks about her starting her own boot line. Now, if you don't know, of course, Mary is famously known for always wearing boots when she's performing and dancing and doing her one-two thing. And she talks about her starting her boot line. Where's the boot line? Ladies have been waiting for the Mary J. Blige boot line. <laughs> As, I mean, you're looking fly in your Javonches right now, but I'm just saying, where is the Mary J.? It's coming. It's a thing? It's coming. It is a thing. Yeah, it's coming. So, cause I, I, can I, like, get some for Christmas or something? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Christmas? We ain't even going um, to production. For, we ain't do nothing yet. You like, said it's coming. I'm thinking It's I mean, coming maybe in two years or something, but not okay. right now. They pressing me All right, about one it. year, one year, one year. Okay. I'm, they, I'm working it out. Okay. Everybody been asking for that. Absolutely. They've been on Mary Head. They've been on Ashana Head. Make that happen. So. Mm-hmm. And yeah, also, she, she talks about her relationship status. It's on the way. The boot line. Well, listen, sis. Uh, I had some um, some fellas ask me of a certain age. Some some. Were, were you single? No. Really? <laughs> no. You're not single? No, I'm not single. Are you happily doing what you're doing? I'm happily doing what I'm doing. Okay. And I'll leave it right there. Also, you know, first of all, dropping the clues bonds. Shout out to Mary, the icon that is Mary J. Blige. Absolutely. Uh, you, you, you got people in a little frenzy yesterday, Envy. Yeah, well, we were about to play that conversation. Well, we did yesterday. We had a Ain't conversation no about SZA and giving SZA her flowers, and this I is how, this is how did the, that. This had a conversation with yesterday. Do we appre- do we appreciate SZA yes. as an artist the way we should? Absolutely. I mean, she gets all the radio play and stuff like that. She does. I, I feel she could. Get more awards, which I'm sure she will. You yeah. know, Grammys, Grammys the next month, so she'll get those accolades. The amount of music she sells, the the, the music that she writes, mm-hmm. the facts that it that that it's all over the radio is streamed. Mm-hmm. Do we respect and support her as we should, as the star that she is? I don't think people do. That's my. That was, that's why I asked the question. No. I don't. I, yeah, I don't. music, yes, but as a, as the star that she is, no. When I look at SZA, I look at and I I don't want to compare. No, I get what you're saying. That's what I mean. The way we, we we had a we had a we had our Mary J. Blige. Right. That's why I was going to compare. She we is had this generation. We had our Beyonce. Correct. We still got our Beyonce. Yeah. Right. We've had our Rihanna. We still right. got our Rihanna. But she's this is one this of those. Yeah, exactly. I'm, saying, I'm just saying I'm she's you. on that top tier. Is what I'm saying. I agree. She's one of those. I agree. Now let the record show. I never said Sizzle was this generation's Mary J. Blige. DJ Envy said that. Yeah. All I said was, I'm not sure we appreciate SZA the way we should, but she is one of them. And by them, I mean she is clearly on her way to being an all-time great. Like, you know, I saw the comments on Shade Room and Hollywood Unlocked, and, you know, they were upset for you comparing her to Mary J. Blige. But but, But if we're talking about it in NBA terms, you know, you have your Magic Johnsons, your Michael Jordans, your Larry Birds, your Kobe's. We know they are them. We know what greatness looks like. But we also know LeBron is one of them now, too. And Steph Curry is one of them now, too. And I believe SZA is one of those rare once-in-a-generational talents. Yeah, well, I I don't care about the comments. This is my opinion. But just like LeBron James, people say LeBron James is this era's Michael Jordan. And that's why we don't give LeBron the respect he deserves. because No, they give him the respect that he deserves. But he's not Michael Jordan. But what Michael Jordan means to me is what LeBron means to my son. It's the same thing. My son didn't see Michael Jordan. What my son got to do with this? I didn't say my son. I said, my son, oh, oh, my, father. my hey, son, okay. what LeBron, you know, what LeBron means, what Michael Jordan meant to me, because I seen Michael Jordan play. I watched his games. That's how my sons look at LeBron. And Did that's you look at same, LeBron like that? That's what, that's what this generation, I feel, look oh, at how SZA. Old, how old's your son? Which one? The one that looks at him? Both one, of them. Because, you know, a lot, a lot of the younger generation, they go a little younger than LeBron. They go like uh, Steph or they go Ja. 
believe it or not, people like Paul George's game. Nah, oh, Logan is Logan is twenty. He just turned twenty, mm-hmm. and he's a LeBron James fan. Even Jackson, who is ten years old, is a LeBron John, LeBron James fan when he does moves. But when he shoots, he, my son, when he still when he shoots, he says Kobe. But because everybody says Kobe, so when he shoots a three, he goes Kobe. But he's really yeah, he's ten years old. He doesn't know. He, he never really got a chance to see Kobe play like that. But he still says that. But the same thing with Scissor. Scissor say that over Steph. Yeah. The team, oh, okay. mm-hmm. Even with SZA SZA is The way that SZA is As far as soulful The way she connects To the audience The way she's so open About her music The kids My kids Look at SZA Like I looked at Mary J. Blige And I stand on that I just think I get it I just think SZA is SZA You know what I mean Yeah SZA, yeah, SZA, she's, SZA. She, All I'm simply saying Is she's one of those Rare once in a generational talents She is one of them Here's that because yeah, we know what them looks like. Right. Like I said, we know what Mary J. Blige looks like. Correct. We know what Beyonce looks like. We know what Rihanna looks like. We know what them looks like. She is one of them. Yeah, I agree. Because even when, when a Mary J. Blige song comes on, it puts you in a mood. It remembers, it, it brings you back man, to a memory. On, Greatest anxiety reliever on the planet. Correct. And But when a SZA, comes, a SZA song comes on, that's how Madison feels. She feels it puts her in a mood of whatever she's feeling or whatever she's been through. It's the same thing. Very similar when it comes to those those artists to me. Storytelling, soulful, same thing. You ain't gotta prove nothing to me. I'm not. I'm just telling you what I feel. Stop fighting the comments. Man. I'm not fighting. I didn't see the comments. You Stop don't want to bring it up. The shade room in Hollywood and lock comments. You Let brought it, it up. Go. I didn't bring it up. You brought it up. I didn't, I didn't even read the comments. All right. Let me tell you how foul Charlemagne is, right? Why? Why Charlemagne always gotta be foul? I'm really the nicest so guy. We about, they they had the, pr- the producer print out the comments. I'm gonna read something. I ain't read these comments. Let me read them. Let me see. <laughs> Let me see. No, I'm not giving to you. Let me see. Let me Let me see. Nope. And how am I foul because the producer printed out the comments? I'm just over here with my Palo Santo lit. Mind hey, my business. Read them. Read them. Let me see. Read them. Let me see. Which one is this? Who is this? Hollywood unlocked the shade room. Uh, I don't know which one. Okay, is. Libra Love both? 22 says, Simple. please stop. Somebody's ill will Northside says, Scissor is kicking ass, but slow down now. But she is doing her thing. No shade. Uh, the Shiera Chantel says she's gonna be bigger than Mary. Let's be honest. Uh, Liz underscore Freely says stop comparing artists. Is this is in Mary is Mary. Uh, Edgar nineteen ninety three says she outsold Mary with just two albums. So no, somebody else says Sizz is Sizz and Mary is Mary. Don't do that respectfully. I wasn't doing that. Somebody said OMG, calm down, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> 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 Somebody said F no SZA is that girl But not Mary I get it That's why you know You don't ever want to compare That's this, It's the same thing With LeBron and Michael Jordan Because then it becomes A generational thing All I'm simply saying is They're both great artists SZA is one of them She is one of them She's a rare Once in a generation And we talent. love SZA I ain't saying she This generation is nobody okay. I'm just saying She one of them okay. That's it Alright well that is Your rumor report The mix is up next Let's go The Breakfast Club Your mornings will never be the same Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Again, I want to salute uh, Joel Embiid, 76 in center. Scored 70 points last night, 18 rebounds, 5 assists, and then Carl Anthony Towns scored 62 points, uh, 8 rebounds, 2 assists, and this was on the 18 year anniversary of Kobe scoring 81 points. That's crazy, man. I, I want to salute to those gentlemen. Salute to both of them, man. Salute to Carl Anthony Towns and Joel Embiid. I watched both of those games last mm-hmm. night, and all I thought to myself was, I'll bust both their asses. That's a goddamn I'll dust both of them. Easy, easy work for me. But um, I also want to tell y'all, as I told you earlier, make sure you go to bit.ly slash Ford Family SCSU Scholarship to apply for my Ford Family Endowed Scholarship if you are a student of South Carolina State University. Now, you know South Carolina State University, that's my... My mother's alma mater. Uh, that's actually my alma mater too. I didn't go to college, but I got an honorary doctorate, you know, from South Carolina State. And uh, you know, I, I opened up the Ford Family Endowed Scholarship at South Carolina State um, a couple of years ago, and so it's open now to current SCSU sophomore senior students. For spring 2024, you must be a state of South Carolina resident and you must major in English or communications because that's what my mother majored in. Our related fields, our studies in mental health related fields like psychology, counseling, our psychiatry because you know I'm a big mental health advocate, man. So the deadline for that scholarship is February 16th, 2024 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. 
So apply at bit.ly slash Ford Family SCSU Scholarship. I'm going to post it up uh, on my Instagram. Matter of fact, it's up on my Instagram right now. If you go to my Instagram, the link is in my bio, C to God, C-T-H-A-G-O-D. So all current South Carolina State University students, sophomore, senior students, go apply for the Ford Family Endowed Scholarship, courtesy of me, okay? Okay. All right. When we come back, we got the positive notice. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, Charlemagne, you got a positive note? I do, man. It comes from one of my favorite Instagram pages, The Healing Guide, man. I love what they discuss. And uh, The Healing Guide said, everybody talks about cutting people off, but nobody really talks about the grief that comes with having to stand firm on that decision, knowing it's not what you wanted, but what was necessary for your well-being. Have a great day. Breakfast Club, bitches. Y'all finished or y'all done?